Uh, okay, let's um, get into the Mathematica now. Mathematica is a NIFT software from Wolfram. And uh, <clears throat> basically, it is um, more or less similar to the MATLAB, which you are uh, familiar with, probably. But the difference between the MATLAB and Mathematica is Mathematica is quite strong in symbolic calculations. And I will show it within a moment. Of course, it's an advanced, very high, uh, very well developed advanced calculator. You can consider it like um, this. Uh, it has several built-in functions that you can use. It can do numerical calculations. Moreover, it can do symbolic calculations very easily. So let's see now. First, how we can uh, of course, it has a menu, okay, file, edit, insert, format, cell, graphics, evaluation, palettes, window, and so forth. But the important thing is, Mathematica has a cell, okay, so this is called cell. Each line is a cell. Let me expand it, uh, expand the magnification for you. Yes, that's better maybe, yeah, okay. Now, this is a cell, you see, now I highlight it on the right-hand side. So, this blue is called cell, and I write here too. And I will calculate 3.5. Then, how to evaluate it? By pressing enter, it will just go one line below. It didn't give me any result. Okay? So, what I do is, while pressing the shift, I press enter. And it gives me an output. So, let me clear the memory first for you and I will do the operation again to make it clear and I will explain why I did that okay so let me evaluate it okay now this is my input one you see two plus five and my output one is seven so this is how Mathematica works I press shift enter and I got this result. Okay, so this is one thing. So what makes Mathematica so special? Let's write x here. And in order to make a multiplication, either you can use a multiplication sign or give a space by the spacebar. x multiplied by x. Then I press shift enter it gives me x square. Okay, so this is basically another thing that you can do easily in MATLAB. You, you need to deal with, uh, you need to do some tricks in, Mat, uh, in MATLAB. Okay, so basically you can do symbol calculations very easily. And, but let's go further. How I can define a variable? Now, let's say that x is equal to 2. I press enter, not shift enter, because, uh, just enter, and y is equal to 5. Now, equal sign will assign a value to the x and y. I press shift enter again. So be careful, the number of output is increasing, also the input. This is my third input. But this is my output 3 and this is my output 4. So I have now x equal to 5 and y equal to, uh, sorry, x equal to 2 and y equal to 5. Now let's say that a is equal to x plus y. It gives me seven now a is seven okay let's see what is the value of a now i write a i press shift enter and it is seven so this is one good uh, thing with the mathematica so i can do symbol calculations i can assign variables at any time and it keeps all these steps in the memory similar to the uh, matlab 
Okay. Now, there is another thing. What I can do with Mathematica, I can easily make integration. So, integrate x with respect to x. So, x is my variable. This is my function, x, or better maybe write x square. Okay? So, first I write the function here. This is my function to be integrated. And I want it to be integrated with respect to this. Now, let me press Shift Enter. Ah, sorry, we assign uh, <laughs> true to the x, so it didn't make, uh, so it is uh, assumed that it is true. So let's say that this is z, that's better. Okay. So I put z, z square, I integrate z square and integrate it with respect to z. Now take the derivative of it. D. First, I write the function z to the power 4, and I want it to be there. I want to take the derivative of it with respect to z. Now it is for z cube. You can do it for trigonometric functions because trigonometric functions are also defined. So d cosine, you see? cosine z multiplied by sine z. So this is my function, which I want to take the derivative, and I take the derivative with respect to z. So cosine square minus sine square. And it does it uh, analytically. So you can do analytical calculations, algebraic calculations very easily and simply. So this is how I uh, use Mathematica. Now, let's see. I want to define a function. Okay. So let's say that I want to define a function f, which is a function of z. Now, I put underbar here in order to tell the Mathematica that this is the variable of my function. Cosine z. Then I press Shift Enter. Okay, now if z is cosine z, now calculate p divided by 3, so 60 degrees. F, P is already a built-in function, so this is how you write it, P, divided by 3, because in Mathematica, trigonometric functions are, uh, works with radians, so you have to co uh, convert any angle into radians if you want them to be evaluated. So it is 1 over 2. Be careful, it didn't write 0 0.5, it writes 1 over 2. Now, let's write here 3.0. Now, it becomes a floating. Uh, so, it's not a fractional, it's a fractional number, but it's a floating number now, because I divide the P divided by 3.0. Zero. So it makes uh, symbolic calculations and evaluate it as if uh, it is defined. So directly uh, how it's built inside the mathematical. Okay, now 
you can take the derivative or integrate f of let's say z with respect to z it is sine z so let's write here f of x so remember that x was 2 this is how we define it here So you can write it like this, f of x multiplied by or let's write here f of x multiplied by f of y. So it is 2 multiplied by 5. Sorry, cosine 2 multiplied by cosine 5. Because uh, this is uh, how we define the fy, fx, and fy. But be careful, it doesn't give us the numerical value. So how I can get the numerical value of it? Then I say n. So whenever you put something uh, inside n with brackets because I always use square brackets in Mathematica it gives you the numerical value so this is cosine 2 multiplied by cosine 5 and that is equal to minus 0 0.11 uh, 45 and so on okay so these are the things uh, initial things uh, the things that are related with the numbers and functions there is another thing that we can define we can define a function let's say again z is the variable for the function then i put colon and with equal sign now i will define a function let's say that sine z multiplied by tangent z be careful now i put a i put a colon here colon and equal sign again this is an equality but it didn't give me any output because it's not evaluated right, uh, yet. So whenever I write G, let's say that R. So now I write the GR, it will give me the value. Now this is this is another function. Now the difference between this one and the f of x is this. Now f x is, uh, or f of z is this. f of z is immediately evaluated. Okay, and assigned cosine z. Now when you put a colon here, what Mathematica does is it didn't give us the output here. It evaluates this function, we call it. This is the difference between the previous one and this one. It will be much more clear in the forthcoming courses. Let's write gg2. So it gives us a value. Sometimes this, this might be important because you may need to define some functions which are very complicated and you want them to evaluate it whenever you call them. For example, you can write, define a function as an integral of a function, okay? Now, if you put it uh, directly equality sign, it will be automatically evaluated when you make the input. But 
when you use the semicolon, it will be evaluated whenever you call it. That is the difference. Okay. Now, uh, these are the things, initial things uh, related with the Mathematica. Now, the second thing is we are going to use vectors and matrices. And we are going to use them heavily. And let us see how we can define a matrix and uh, vector. Now, let's call a vector. Let's say that capital K or let's say D, small d. That's better. Now, I put two vectors here. You see? Now, I will input the variables. 1, 5, 4, 6, 12. Now, this is my vector. Let me see how it is seen. Now, for this purpose, I use matrix form command. You see, this is my vector. So, uh, which has uh, five members, five elements. Now, let's write the, let's multiply D with D. Okay, so d square, but the scalar multiplication of the two vectors. In order to multiply two vectors by uh, scalar multiplication of two vectors, I just put a point, okay, dot here. I just press on the dot in my keyboard and then it multiplies D with D. So how it works? It multiplies 1 by 1, 4 by 4, 5 by 5, 6 by 6, 12 by 12, and sum up all the values. Because this is the scalar multiplication of two vectors. Or let's define uh, another vector, let's say, which is B, again with 5 elements and let's assume that all of them are one and let's see what's going to happen again i press shift enter i always press shift enter in order to evaluate them now i multiply d with b 28 let's remember the d so d is 1 4 5 6 and 12 what is the value of here? 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 plus 5 is 10. Now I have 6 here, which makes 16. And plus 12, 28. So I multiply this vector, D, with the vector of 1s. Okay, so I multiply 1 with 1, 4 with 1, and then uh, better like this. Okay, so we will see two vectors side by side. So I'll multiply 1 by 1, 4 by 1, 5 by 1, 6 by 1, and 12 by 1, and sum up all these. Then. So I keep uh, write uh, two vectors. Now, let us define a matrix where the first row is vector D and the second row is vector B. And let's call it A. Again, I put curly brackets. So I say that this is D and this is B. I press shift enter. Now I have a matrix. Of course, Mathematica doesn't show it to me in a proper way, in a way that I want to see. In order to see it in a proper way, I use matrix form command. You see? 
you see now this is my matrix this is my first row this is my second row and this is my first column second column third column fourth and fifth column now how i can call a specific element of a vector or a matrix so this is the second thing so let's call third element of d now i use sorry for that square brackets for this purpose and i write here the uh, index of the element that i want to call so if i want to call third element i write here three you see it's five now let's turn back to my matrix now again i put double square brackets now i just want to call the same elements because first row of my matrix is uh, my vector tree so first i put the row index then i put the column index because third element of the vector d is now in my third column you can do it for any one so this is what we have seen okay so how i can input a matrix in general let's write the b matrix then so i put first my curly brackets then i put in another curly bracket let's define a two by three matrix so which means that i have two vectors uh, two rows and three columns this means that each row has three members so the inner brackets are for rows in matrix so three one uh, x I can put anything here. E for G of X. Or G of, uh, let's say, S. okay now if you put a semicolon here at the end of the line inside a cell be careful each evaluation creates a new cell it will not give me the value on the screen but it will evaluate it and keep it in the memory now it will give me anything you see Now let me write B. Let's see the B now. If it evaluated, it must give me an output. Of Okay, so this is my matrix B. The first row is 3, 1, 2, 
and the second row is t for sine s tangent s okay in fact i can define a matrix function 